In this tutorial, we will introduce the cost calculations for aggregate planning. In this example, we will be using the following costs. 1. The cost of producing one unit using regular time is $10. 2. The cost of producing one unit using overtime is $15. 3. The cost of producing one unit using subcontracting is $22. 4. The cost of holding one unit in inventory for one period is $1. 5. The cost of back ordering one unit for one period is $2. This is the period by period forecast for the planning period. They need 100 in period 1, 125 in period 2, 115 in period 3, 110 in period 4, 125 in period 5, 150 in period 6, 125 in period 7, and 120 in period 8 for a total of 970. This is the production plan. In later tutorials, we will see how to develop this plan. However, for the first couple of tutorials, the plan will be given so we can concentrate on the cost calculations. They plan to produce 790 units using regular time, that is, 90 in period 1 and 100 in the remaining periods. They plan to produce 165 in overtime, that is, 0 in period 1, 15 in periods 2 through 6, and 30 in periods 5 through 8. Finally, they plan to subcontract 5 in period 1 and 10 in period 2. While not shown, the total of the regular time, overtime, and subcontracting production equals the demand of 970 over the planning period. That will almost always be the case. About the only time it would be different would be when there's a beginning inventory so less needs to be produced. Speaking of beginning inventory, assume it is zero unless the problem tells you otherwise. That value is entered here. We will be calculating all the inventory and back order values before moving on to the cost calculations. Beginning inventory of 0 plus total production of 95 minus demand of 100 gives an ending inventory of 0. 0 plus 95 minus 100 is negative 5, but inventory cannot be negative, so ending inventory is 0. Since we are 5 short of the number needed, we must back order the 5 units we are short. The beginning inventory in period 2 is just the ending inventory of for period 1. It will always be the case that the beginning inventory for any period is just the ending inventory for the prior period. We produce 125 but need 130 because we have demand of 125 and 5 back orders that need to be filled so ending inventory is again 0. Since we needed 130 but only made 125, we keep 5 back ordered. The beginning inventory for period 3 is the ending inventory for period 2 is 0. We need 120 to fulfill the demand of 115 in the back ordered 5 units, but only make 115 so ending inventory is again 0. Since we needed 120 but only made 115, we keep 5 back ordered. The beginning inventory for period 4 is the ending inventory for period 3 of 0. We need 115 to fulfill the demand of 110 in the back ordered 5 units, and we make 115 so ending inventory is 0. Since we needed 115 and we made 115, back order goes to zero. The beginning inventory for period 5 is the ending inventory for period 4 of zero. We need 125 and make 130, so ending inventory is 130 minus 125 equals 5. Since we produced enough, back ordered is zero. The beginning inventory for period 6 is the ending inventory for period 5 of 5. We need 150, but produce only 130 plus the 5 in inventory, so ending inventory is 0. Between the 5 in beginning inventory and 130 production, we have 135, but need 150, so back orders are 150 minus 135 equals 15. The beginning inventory for period 7 is the ending inventory for period 6 of 0. We need 125 for the forecast, but 115 back ordered equals 140, but only make 130, so ending inventory equals 0. We need 140, but only make 130, so back orders are 140 minus 130 equals 10. The beginning inventory for period 8 is the ending inventory for period 7 of 0. We need 120 for the forecast, plus 10 back ordered equals 130. We make 130, so ending inventory is 0. In general, the ending inventory for the last period should be 0 unless the problem gives you a reason to end with a different value. We needed 130 and made 130, so back orders are 0. Like ending inventory, in general, the ending back order value should be zero unless the problem gives you a reason to make it a different value. We are now going to calculate average inventory. Average inventory is just the average of beginning and ending inventory. In other words, beginning inventory plus ending inventory all divided by 2. 
you will need to keep one decimal point for these values. For periods 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, and 8, 0 plus 0 divided by 2 is 0. For period 5, 0 plus 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. For period 6, 5 plus 0 divided by 2 is 2.5. We now compute a couple of totals. We will use these totals later. We do not need totals of beginning inventory or ending inventory. For average inventory, 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 0 plus 0 equals 5. Again, you need to maintain one decimal point. For back orders, 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 0 plus 0 plus 15 plus 10 plus 0 equals 40. That completes the inventory calculations. We are now ready to move on to the cost calculations. For period 1, the 90 produced in regular time times the $10 cost of regular time equals $900. For period 2, 100 times $10 equals $1,000. For period 3, 100 times $10 equals $1,000. For periods 4 through 8, 100 times $10 equals $1,000. 900 plus 1,000 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 equals $7,900 total cost for regular time production. If you do not need period by period cost totals, you can get the total cost of regular time production directly by taking the total produced in regular time of 790 times the $10 cost of regular time equals $7,900. You'll get the same total cost either way. Overtime costs are computed exactly the same way, only using overtime production and its associated cost of $15. For period 1, there's no overtime production, so cost is zero. For periods 2 through 4, overtime production is 15, and 15 times $15 equals $225. For periods 5 through 8, 30 times $15 equals $450. For total overtime cost, 0 plus 225 plus 225 plus 225 plus 450 plus 450 plus 450 plus 450 equals $2,475. Additionally, 165 times $15 equals $2,475. There was no hiring or layoffs in this example, so those costs are zero. Since there were no hirings or layoffs, this section is simply left blank. We will incorporate hiring and layoffs into the next example. Five units were subcontracted in period one at a cost of $22 each, so total cost was $110. For period two, 10 times $22 equals $220. There was no subcontract in periods 3 through 8, so those costs are all zero. $110 plus $220 equals $330, as does 15 times $22. Inventory holding cost is calculated as the average inventory times the inventory holding cost of $1. For periods 1 through 4 and 7 through 8, there was no average inventory, so inventory holding cost is zero. For periods 5 and 6, the average inventory of 2.5 times the holding cost of $1 equals $2.50. Total inventory holding cost is $2.50 plus $2.50 equals $5 or 5.0 times $1. Back order costs are calculated as the back order quantity at the end of the period times the back order cost of $2. Note that we're using average inventory for calculating inventory holding cost, but ending back order values for calculating back order costs. For periods 1 to 3, 5 back ordered times $2 equals $10. For periods 4, 5, and 8, there are no back orders, so cost is zero. For period 6, 15 times $2 equals $30. For period 7, 10 times $2 equals $20. Total back order cost is $10 plus $10 plus $10 plus $30 plus $20 equals $80, or 40 times $2. Total cost is just a total cost for each period. For period 1, 900 plus 110 plus 10 equals $1,020. For period 2, 1,000 plus 225 plus 220 plus 10 equals $1,455. For period 3, 1,000 plus 225 plus 10 equals $1,235. For period 4, 1,000 plus 225 equals $1,225. For period 5, 1,000 plus 450 plus 2.5 equals $1,452.50. Here the total cost is rounded to a whole number visually, but the decimal point is included in future calculations. For period 6, 1,000 plus 450 plus 2.5 plus 30 equals $1,482.50.
and again the values rounded for display but the full values included in future calculations. For period 7, 1000 plus 450 plus 20 equals $1,470. For period 8, 1000 plus 450 equals $1,450. Total cost is $7,900 plus $2,475 plus $330 plus $5 plus $80 equals $10,790 or $1,020 plus $1,455 plus $1,235 plus $1,453 plus $1,452.50 plus $1,482.50 plus $1,470 plus $1,450. You get the same answer either way. This $10,790 is the total cost of the plan and is the value used to compare different aggregate plans. This is just the cost of this particular plan. The plan is just a plan. There's no guarantee that any particular plan is optimal. If you found that this video helped you with your operations management problem, please consider liking the video and even subscribing to the channel.